Hello YouTube. Well, we're going to make a few videos now all about 3D printing. I'll release them over the next few days uh, and, and, and weeks and it's going to cover everything. So from right from the beginning, um, from choosing your printer, setting it up, um, all the ins and outs, modifications, how to do your first layer. That's going to be an early one. I'm not going to do it in any special order. I'm just going to go with what I want to do at the time. Um, so printing the first layer seems to be most people's problems. So I'm going to go through that. Um, but today we're just going to do the anatomy of a printer because uh, it's quite complicated and there's a lot of bits to it and I'll be referring to them in all the videos. So it's important I go through all of that now. So if you're a complete um, newbie and you haven't got a printer yet, at least you know what we're talking about in the videos. So in the last video, uh, the comeback video, as they say, uh, I said something about GearBest and um, what they offer me. So I'll just go into that a little bit now. So I had an email from GearBest uh, said, oh, we've seen your channel. It's an amazing channel and we think we can help you and we'll give you some equipment to review if you want. And I said, oh, yeah. So this is over email. Um, so I asked them uh, a whole list of about 10 questions exactly on the commercial relationship, the um, links between products and obligations, liability, tax, can it be donated to charity afterwards? All of these questions, uh, I kind of knew the answers, but I just wanted to see what GearBest view was. Um, and it ends up basically, if somebody gives you a link for GearBest, always doing a review and they see us say it's from GearBest or Banggood or any other thing, then they're working for them. There's no other way of looking at it. They're giving the person stuff, they're getting a review out of it and they're paying for the review through the stuff. Sometimes money. We won't talk about TiVo here because that's a whole mess at the moment. Uh, but it's either money or gear. And that's the payment for the review you get online. It doesn't have to be a positive review because they don't really care. But what they say in their email is if you um, don't have a positive review, then not many people are going to click through the links that you give out and the codes you give out. And if they don't do that, you won't be getting any more stuff. So it's a working relationship. You're working for them, then paying you in goods or money. Um, and, and that's as simple as it is. So I've got no interest in that at all. They, when I said I wasn't very interested, but I'm going to do some videos on 3D printing, they said, that's all right, we'll send you 10 3D printers. You can have a Delta printer. You can have several Creality printers. You can have some TiVos, um, uh, any Cubics, whatever you want, really, and we'll, we'll send you. And you can just review them all, put the links up, and that's it. There's no, no money involved. It's just, just what it is. Um, I said, really not, because then I'm working for you. It's my time gone. Um, to be honest, the printer reviews for GearBest are absolutely rubbish because what they do is they get the product. There's an expectation that you do, do the review fairly quickly within a few weeks. So they couldn't have really tested the product. All they do is unbox it. They'll probably do a video of unboxing, which is like, I don't want to see you unbox a product. That's completely boring. Um, then they do a video on how to set the printer up. So there's millions of videos that are all exactly the same and don't help you at all. Um, and then there's a review on, oh, we printed a Benchy, which is like a calibration test piece. Oh, we printed a vase and we printed this from Thingiverse. And what they're doing is showing that the, the unit is working. What they're not doing is a review of the printer over a year of printing. How does it perform? What breaks? What fails? Where are the weak points? You know, that's a, that's a review of a product. Um, so you're not seeing reviews, you're seeing advertising for products on these companies. And I just don't like it. I don't want 10 printers. I don't want to waste my time um, doing ridiculous reviews that everybody else has done. It's, it's just pollutes the YouTube content, I think. And I want to keep it pure, you know, really useful content. So no adverts, no, um, no sending me money, no, no, none of that rubbish. So for my channel, it's perfectly okay for other people to do it because some people do it as a job, some people do it as an income, some people do it to support other things, which is great, I think, that that opportunity is out there for them. But here, I want a little piece of YouTube where you're not blasted with adverts and, you know, ooh, click here, click here. I don't want any of that because 
I don't like that on YouTube and I know some of you lot don't like it either. So if you come to my channel, that's what you get. You're not going to get the latest bargain. You're going to get some um, content without all of the sales pitch. So that to one side, I've not got 10 printers. I've got one printer, um, one printer for now. Uh, I've got another one on the way. So this is the first printer. I bought it. I did loads of research, decided this is the one I want. Um, been using this for quite a few months now, done hundreds of prints on it. Um, so I know a little bit about it and modded it completely to every last detail. Um, so I know this printer in and out. So this is a Creality CR10S. Um, I like it. I wouldn't say it's for everyone. Um, you can make amazing prints from it. Um, but if you're not got an engineering mind or a mod kind of, I want to modify these things mind, then um, it, it's not really the printer for you. You need something that costs a lot more money, but you have to do less to it and it just prints. Um, so the Prusa Mark II, the Prusa Mark III, are those kind of printers under a thousand dollars or a thousand pound. Those are the printers that just print and you don't have to worry too much. Um, these you have to do, I, I think you have to do a lot of work, but the results are absolutely stunning. Um, probably better than a lot of other printers to be honest once you get it down and you learn a lot if you want to learn about 3d printing this is a great printer for you as well um, I nearly threw this one through the window after about two weeks of having it because I couldn't print anything um, it was a nightmare you know I'm not I'm not the most intelligent guy out there but I do know a few things about engineering and stuff and this, I was struggling with this. This is really hard. So it's a completely different mindset. Once you get over the learning curve, uh, it's fine. So all that said in mind, a lot of people think 3D printing is different uh, than it actually is. So they think you can load some software on the machine, put some filament in, press the go button, and out pops, um, you know, out pops a little, little guy it's all lovely and precise and clean and you know that's not 3d printing at all to print that i printed it partially printed it four times with all different settings until i got the ones i want then i printed the final one which is about 15 hours um and then um and then you got all the cleanup work and then i processed mine with beeswax and sand in the rest of it so it's not a simple process now Saying all that, I think what we do is we go over the anatomy of a printer today and then we'll do first layers on the next video and then we'll start going into, you know, slices and how we print and things for no money, no money on that side of it other than the, the materials. So let's go over the anatomy of the printer. I'll bring you over so you can see. I've got a pointy stick because we're going to have to point out a lot of stuff. Um, there will be a test at the end. Um, so if you want to pay attention to this bit that'll be handy and then you'll know for all the other videos okay I'll take you over here so this is the control box uh, it's got all the brains in there they run off Arduino boards uh, specific printer boards I would say inside they've got drivers for driving all the stepper motors and all the memory that you need uh, display controller knob all, all the menu items on the controller knob really nice user interface um, this is the uh, USB extension cable. Now I'd recommend this for all printers um, because you're gonna be putting the memory cards in and out quite a lot. Um, and if you use the one on the board, that's gonna wear out. So just put a little extension cable, only five pound or something, um, and then you can get your, your extension there. Um, and this runs on micro SD, but I like the SD cards. I think they're more robust and things like that. Um, so I prefer to, to have that in there and just have the micro SD in there. Uh, it's got a USB connector because you can connect these direct to a PC if you want. I don't recommend that for printing um, because if the PC goes into any funny mode or an update, it'll crash your print. So I always print from an SD card, never had a problem, never had a crash, never had an issue. Then you've got this, uh, which is the spool holder. Uh, this is one I designed and printed. You can find it on Thingiverse. Just go to Tack Blade. You'll see all my designs on there. And this holds the, the spool with the filament on. Um, this is the standard one on the back here. Here. Uh, I didn't like it. It doesn't fit very well. It doesn't work very well. So I just made this one. It latches over the sides. 
um, so it don't come off and it's got a stabilization bar across the middle so it can't fall apart and things like that so you got your you got your filament uh, and that's a whole subject within itself which we'll go through on another day and the filament goes in on this one it goes through a filament sensor detector this is a run out sensor so if the filament uh, runs out and goes through this stops the printer and it does a certain maneuver to allow you to put new filament in without losing the the print um, so that's quite handy I really like this um, this is the extruder let's see go around here I think yeah this is the extruder with the extruder cog and this turns against a, a bearing and the filament goes through the middle and this pressure here with the tension on this spring uh, just moves the filament in and out and really you're looking at um, 0.1 of a millimeter resolution uh, the actual stepper motor resolution is 0.04 of a millimeter so it's very precise but when you're um, moving about you're looking at 0.1 of a millimeter in terms of adjustment this is your Bowden clip these are a pain in the neck they're not that good design uh, basically it holds this tube into here and guides the filament through and this is a pressure release uh, mechanism you can buy Bowden clips which clip onto this bit here uh, to keep this bit out this way to stop it slipping out the blue one is a Bowden tube this is a Bowden feed printer and the Bowden tube this one is a, a modification this is a custom tube so this is a very high temperature tube so I can do high temperature filaments uh, the standard one will only do PLA and PETG you can't do ABS or anything like that on it the Bowden tube goes in to all the way down into another Bowden clip and then into the heater block uh, into the hot end so this is the cool section of the hot end and at the bottom this is the hot hot end of the hot end or the heater block if you like um, and this is the thing that gets hot this is the thing that stays cool so you've got cool filament you've got cool filament going down and then when it reaches here when it's inside here it turns to a liquid comes out of the nozzle um, and that's where it squirts it out between the heater block can't really see it between the heater block and the the hot end cool part there's a, a tube and that's called a heat break or a throat tube um, for the heater block and that's what does the transition between the filament in the Bowden tube going into the heater block itself so that's the anatomy of the hot end um, in here this one here is a um, heater cartridge that goes into the heater block this is just a piece of metal uh, this stuff on the outside is insulation it's ceramic wall to keep it warm um, and even temperature and the heater cartridge goes in there heats it up and then next to the heater cartridge let's see if you can see it in here see that little screw yeah this little screw here that's a th well there's a little hole at the bottom of that screw and that's a thermistor and that does the feedback loop for the temperature control so it does like hysteresis control management on there to keep this at a very constant temperature because even a deviation of one degree can have an effect on the the viscosity of the filament coming out and then it can affect your print so it's very precise this is the cooling fan yeah this is a custom one that I printed these are all custom that I printed uh, this fan here is the hot end cooling fan keeps the filament cool up here while this stays hot at the bottom and then this one here is the part cooling fan which all it does is take air in pushes it around these fangs and at the bottom comes out either side to provide even cooling so just at the right angle so as the filament leaves the nozzle hits the the bit that it's uh, dropping onto and then cools as fast as possible to make it solid so that's how how that works so on the hot end itself this is on the the carriage plate which is this here uh, these are the rollers and the bearings they ha all have to be adjusted uh, so there's absolutely no wiggle and no play you you're printing at very high tolerances so you want to make sure there's no play in anything um, and to do that underneath you see here there's a nut that's not well it's kind of they call it an eccentric nut so it's a nut with a hole 
that's off center. So as you turn this nut, it raises this pulley up and down and puts pressure onto the carriage plate. And then it gives you complete um, control over the pressure of the rollers on the plate to give you nice smooth operation. So these are extruded V-rail, um, they call them extrusions or aluminium. These, um, see the chamfers on the rollers, they sit in the V-rail and provide nice even um, movement. This is the belt, uh, this is a rubber belt or composite belt. Um, and this underneath is attached to the carriage plate through these on slots and that just pulls it backwards and forwards. What moves the belt is the stepper motors. So this is the end of the stepper motor, controlled by the control box. Um, these are NEMA 17 stepper motors, very accurate, very precise, good torque. Um, and this is another carriage plate for the, this is the X axis and this is the Z axis. Uh, so this is going up and down the Z axis again, concentric nuts, um, rollers going up and down here. Um, this plate here, is just to hold the proximity or the, the sensor switch here. This is the end stop. So when the carriage gets to the end, hits the end stop micro switch, there you go. And then it knows it's at the end, so it knows where X and Y is and all that. It's got those on all three axis. Um, the Z end stop is down here. So when it comes down, hits that, creates a Z end stop. Uh, back here is the z-axis. We've got two of these on this one. Um, this is the z-axis coupler. Uh, this provides different torque uh, relief from the stepper motor and the uh, z-lead screw, which is here. This is the z-screw, or lead screw for the z-axis. Uh, these are the z-axis bushings, which go onto the lead screw, uh, which provide the, the up and down carriage movement. And we've got another one on the other side. On this machine, this is really the only thing you want to lubricate. You put some silicone grease on these to make it run smooth. Um, everything else is pretty much maintenance free except for cleaning. So we've got the X axis, we've got the Z axis, and now we go on to the Y axis. So go to the back. We've got the Y axis stepper motor, another NEMA 17. Um, uh, we've got the pulley uh, or the gear to go on the stepper motor, uh, another belt with a, a guide pulley. Now, if you notice on mine, you won't see it on some of them, you've got this thing between the stepper motor and the plate. And this is a stepper motor damper. So this provides massive uh, noise reduction on the stepper motors, which are high pitched whining noise. And this dampens it, it's just a very stiff rubber gasket between two metal plates and you put it in between as an interface and it makes the whole thing a lot a lot quieter so they're really uh, advisable so got x we've got z so y on this one is the plate going backwards and forwards okay so you've got your stepper motor at the back also at the back um, is a y-axis end stop which is here another micro switch so it's got three micro switches um, and at this end uh, of the, the Y axis, you've got a roller, so it just goes round and round. But this is where you tension this belt. Uh, so you loosen these off, you pull it out, tension, tighten it up. Uh, you can mod that if you want to have like a screw bearing tightener on that. On the X axis, this is where you tighten the belt. So you slacken these off, loosen it out, tighten them up. That's how you get tension on the belt. You need quite a lot of tension on the belt. Um, not drum string, but it needs to be it needs to be pretty tight because um, when it moves a tiny amount, you want the bed to move the same. You don't want any slack in there. So talking of bed, this is obviously where you do your printing. This top layer for me is the print surface, or the uh, yeah the print surface. So this is uh, a print bite print surface. This is a special one because I like it. it stick, everything sticks to it. There's no glue, no hairspray, no mess. We'll go into all that on another video. The print surface is bonded uh, to a piece of glass, which is very flat. So together they make the print surface, I would say. Um, and then under the glass, you've got the print bed, which is this aluminium um, 
piece here, which does all the the support and the carriage and everything else. Very important that's flat. Mine's not flat. And on another video, I'll show you how I flatten it out. These are the print bed clips. I put some leather in mine uh, because A, this gets very hot uh, and it stops any slipping or damage to the things underneath. Then underneath, you've got uh, this thing here is a heater. So this is the bed heater um, and this heats up the metal. Uh, so you've got heated bed. Uh, these are the adjustment springs. Um, and I put washers under mine, so I wanted more tension in these springs, um, so they provide a very stable adjustment for the platform. Uh, these are your, your leveling knobs or uh, leveling wheels to do very fine adjustment on these. This is your carriage, um, and this provides a support for the heated bed. And then under the carriage, you've got your carriage wheels. Uh, normally there's three on this side, three on the other side. And I've removed the middle wheel because it's providing weird tensions between all three. When you've only got four, it's very easy to tension. And on here, this side, this is round nuts. If you go on the other side, you've got square concentric nuts. So this is where you do your tension um, that way for the wheels to put pressure onto the, uh, the extrusion to get your very accurate adjustment for that. Because you don't want your bed to move around. You want that to be very, very still um, and very accurate. So that's your bed, your axes, all of that. And then underneath, obviously, you've got your feet. Some people put special things under here to isolate the machine from uh, the support or the build platform or what you put in your machine on uh, to give some vibration isolation. I might be doing this in future. There's some ones you can put squash balls in, which are great for um, deadening the vibrations through the the floor and things and then you need your platform to put it on now this is a chest of drawers it wasn't strong enough or, or, or wide enough really for the printer so I put some oh, I don't know three quarters of an inch um, 20 mil MDF board it's very dense uh, very solid um, and put that down so it can sit on there Underneath, you can put a bit of storage down here. These are just co uh, pure 100% cotton cloths, and I use these all the time. These are super useful. So when you've got filament on your nozzle, and you'll have a lot of filament on your nozzle all the time, um, you can just wipe that off when it's hot, and it will just clean the nozzle off. You don't want to put any metal tools on that nozzle, because the nozzle's only brass. It will scratch, and if you get any scratches near the nozzle itself coming out, then you get... Um, problems with the filament coming out because you haven't got a perfectly round surface or flat surface for it to come out and that will show up on your print so you don't want to be getting any hardware tools near there um, when you're maintenance just use a soft cloth wipe it when it's hot and it'll stay always clean um, so that's that um, what else the control box I put on some some very dense rubber so this is yoga mat just cut up and that gives it good vibration isolation because there's fans in here which go at a heck of a rate um, so that uh, that just isolates that i'll just turn it on it'd be a bit loud but you'll see so if you'll notice tack blades so it's got custom firmware on this one uh, this is marlin 1.1.6 this is not what comes with the printer this is something else uh, at the moment it's running fairly quietly the noise you can hear probably is this fan here which is keeping the hot end cool at the top so you don't want ever molten filament to go up this far because then you're in all sorts of trouble uh, get blocked nozzles and things like that so this is the um, control interface you just got simple menus prepare move axis so you can go in so you want to move the z move it one millimeter at a time and then you can just just goes up and down you can see and there you go, look. Okay, so everything's fully manually controllable. Um, and because it's my own firmware, I can control a lot more than the stock. And we're going to whole firmware updates and um, how all that works and Marlin and all the rest in, a, in another video. That's quite an in-depth one. That's quite risky as well. So we'll, we'll do that completely separate. But for basics, that's the whole thing uh, set up. Just turn that off you can just turn it on and off at the back you don't have to do anything or go into like an off option in the menu just 
power it on and off whenever you like. If you change the uh, SD card, there's an option in the menu to reinitialize it, so you don't have to turn it on and off every time you change the SD card. Um, and that basically is a Cartesian 3D printer, you know, all in all. This is very tall, so I can go up 400 mil. I got 300 mil, 300 mil, so I can print massive things. Um, and that's basically your printer anatomy. And there you go, that is printer anatomy 101. Uh, it's quite a lot to take in, um, but in all my other videos, you'll know now what everything's called. And when I say oh, I'm going to change the Bowden tube out, or um, uh, I've got to realign my jerk settings, you'll be able to relate that now to the things we talked about uh, here in this video. So I just thought I'd run that through to you. I'm not going to go any more today because it'll be a really long video. Um, and I think in the next one, uh, we'll do uh bed leveling because that is the most problem that most new people have with a 3d printer so we'll do that different types of printers this is cartesian uh x y and z in this configuration there's also a configuration called core x y uh, which is also cartesian but it looks like a cube when you see it so this frame is in the shape of a cube and it's got a complete different setup for moving the head around and sometimes the bed this bed drops down and uh, the X stays where it is, rather than the X going up and down. So that's, that's a different configuration. Delta printers look like very tall with arm, three arms going down to a head, hot end. They call it an effector, but it's just a hot end. And that moves around, the bed stays still. So that's another um, type. And there's SLAs and SLSs and all sorts of other ones, resin printers and stuff. But we'll be talking about this one, then we'll talk about a Delta one when I get that one. That is a Christmas project, so the Delta one will be my my uh, hobby over Christmas to, to learn about and mess about with over Christmas, so that'll be fun. This one I paid um, £450 for from AliExpress. Uh, out of all the stores, I would recommend AliExpress over all of them. Not because I've got any affiliation with them or anything like that. It's because uh, AliExpress is the only one that acts as a proxy for your money. So when you buy something from AliExpress, you're sending money to the company called AliExpress. And that company holds your money and is a storefront for many vendors. So Creality, the company that make this, they're, they they a part of AliExpress, um, they don't receive your money. So I paid 450 to AliExpress. The company that make this and distribute it don't get any of that money at that point in time. So they then have to send it to you. Um, you have to physically receive it. And then on AliExpress, you have to acknowledge that it's received. And that, that is the point where they get paid, not before. So if it takes a long time to get to you, they're not getting paid. So it's in their interest to get it to you fast, to get it to you accurately. And what you need to do is open it up, check everything's there. There's, on mine, I had some problems. So the, the plate here was broken and cracked in transit with DHL. So I didn't acknowledge that I received the printer. I got in contact with them and said, look, I got these issues. They said, no problem at all. Don't forget they haven't been paid, so they're motivated to help you out. So they sent me a whole bag of spares, loads and loads of stuff, more than I needed. They re this company is excellent for support. Um, so I got, and I waited, five days later, DHL, all the spares arrived, checked everything that is all okay, put it together, turned it on, make sure it powered up, and then on AliExpress, I said, okay, I've received my product now. And at that point, they got paid. So I like that. That's a brilliant way where you have leverage or control over the supplier um, after you've paid your money. So Gearbest don't work like that at all. They work as a pure shop front. So if you buy something from Gearbest, once you pay them, that goes to the supplier, then they're not motivated to help you at all. And Gearbest don't care. They don't care whether they're selling shoes or cars. They don't care at all. So if you buy something from Gearbest and they have no stock, it could be months before you get your product. If they have stock, it could be days before you get your product. So, um, and once you've paid them, whether you get your product or not, they don't really care because they've got your money and the products between you and the vendor, they really don't care about it at all. The money's all gone to the right place. So um, 
be very wary with gear bass. Sometimes you'll get a great service, sometimes you'll get a terrible service and zero support. Um, and you probably won't even get to talk to the original supplier, you'll only talk to gear bass people who um, are just shifting boxes, they, they don't care. So yeah, be wary of that. Same with Banggood, same setup, same as Wish. Wish are a little bit more worse because Wish have got really dodgy descriptions that are really not describing the product they're selling. So be, be very wary of Wish. Uh, Amazon Prime is good. You get a lot more support with Amazon Prime and or Amazon and maybe you'll get it even quicker. Um, but uh, obviously the prices could be different because uh, you've got more people in the chain handling it to you and then you've got in-country suppliers which are really good because they buy it for you check it all out make sure it all works ship it locally which is great but you're going to pay a couple of hundred quid um, for that privilege so that's that's another option to go down so just be wary um, look for good deals by all means but price is not always the driving factor you want good service you want good support and you want good delivery um, and, and you want a bit of reassurance that you're going to get what you pay for. So um, just bear that in mind when you're seeing all these deals and vouchers floating everywhere from the people working for GearBest, <laughs> um, one way or another. So there you go. That's the introduction to printers. That's the anatomy, anatomy of my printer. Um, and um, we'll look forward to the next video when we do a bit of leveling. How exciting. Okay, cheers. Bye.